What does Vladimir Putin's body language say about him? Find out next. And we're back, Shakers. As you all know, Russia is a democracy, and Vladimir Putin is the president of that democracy. See, he even won re-election. A woman appears to stick ballot after ballot into the box. At another spot in Russia's Far East, a man appears to do the same thing. In addition to president of Russia, Vladi is a Formula One race car driver, aircraft pilot, black belt in judo, swimmer, fisherman, hunter, horseback rider, and professional ice hockey player. <laughs> We'll break all that down later. However, more recently, Vladdy has been playing a real-life version of the board game Risk, positioning Russian troops on the border of Ukraine. I'm not going to psychoanalyze President Putin of Russia. That's okay, Veep. We'll do that here by breaking down Vladdy's behavior and body language to finally reveal secrets about his personality and to determine whether we're on the brink of World War III, where we'll have to rely on Gen Z TikTokers and gamers to be drafted and save the world. Now... Let's get started. But in all this time, Russia has not hosted the World Expo. Not once. Many of you may not know, but Vladi can actually speak English pretty well. But in all of his English-speaking interviews, he always relies on a translation. And it's very important for us to know this when we're breaking down interviews, that Vladi knows exactly what the interviewer just asked when the interviewer asked it and not having to rely completely on the translation. You're much talked about in America. There's much conversation. Now see what you think of Vladdy's response, behavior, and body language when he answers here. More so than any... Maybe they have nothing else to do in America but talk about me. No, no, no. No, or maybe they're curious people. <laughs> or maybe you're an interesting character. Maybe that's what it is. Did you catch it? Now let's break it down. More so than any... Maybe they have nothing else to do in America but talk about me. Vladdy starts to become a little self-deprecating as well as give America a little bit of a jab. But if we keep watching, watch for his body language. No, no, no. No, or maybe they're curious people. <laughs> or maybe you're an interesting character. Or maybe that's what it is. Well, all that indicates as a cluster, Vladdy, to some extent, cares about what Western culture thinks of him. During the hockey games, the same hockey games that Vladdy plays in, they play Western music, American artists during the hockey games, kind of like We Will Rock You, all those songs that are played in any other sporting venue. <laughs> For Vladdy to actually be talked about in America, makes him feel like he's a superstar. And clearly, he kind of likes it. For Vladimir Putin, America is where stars are, superstars are, Hollywood, the best athletes. As much as Vladimir Putin wants to pretend that, you know, Russia is, you know, right side by side with America. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, Russia is basically a glorified gas station. Their economy is all oil and gas. Russia is a gas station masquerading as a country. It's kleptocracy, it's corruption, a nation that is really only dependent upon oil and gas for their economy. But for Vladimir Putin to be talked about in America, I think that's kind of actually motivating some of his actions. This is all gonna start to come together more as we continue. The president of Turkestan gives Vladdy a dog. <laughs> and apparently that's the way they hold dogs in Turkestan. <laughs> Notice Vladdy's body language here, and then we'll break it down. Yeah, Vladi uh, rescues the little pup who's being held up by a scruff. Even in Russia, we don't do that crap here. Dog's not dead. <laughs> Vladi shows up what seems to be some of a rare caring side, a side that you may not have seen much before. Pets the dog's head and the back of its neck scruff that was all disturbed by being held up like a game prize. I've never seen a human hold a dog like that. Then Vladi kisses the dog's head, lets the dog down, 
and then sees it off, indicating that he actually does care for the dog. But here's a question for you. Do psychopaths generally gravitate towards having dogs or not like dogs? Yeah, psychopaths actually gravitate towards dogs. Can you guess why? Yes, it's because dogs are easily manipulated and dogs provide them with as much attention as they can ever want. So keep that in mind for everyone who sees someone in a dog park and sees, oh, wow, he looks so caring that he has a dog. He must be able to be so kind and caring towards me, too. Not always. However, given the fact that Vladdy showed affection to the dog and also rescued the dog from being held up by its scruff in front of everybody, based on this clip right here, it doesn't seem like Vladdy's actually a psychopath. Why did you kill that bird, asshole? My mother thinks that she's in a relationship with Vladimir Putin. You said you know he doesn't have a soul. I did say that to him, yes. And to and his response was, we understand one another. Vladimir Putin, the picture of power? How important do you think it is to project strength? Now notice Vladdy's response here and see what you think. It's not important to project strength. It's important to manifest strength. Manifest? Vladdy basically slipped right there. His whole image of what he's trying to convey and wants people to see is him on horseback, shirtless and strong, and doing all these rugged outdoor things. It's important to manifest strength. Which is kind of a slip up because his whole MO is basically, he's just this strong guy you don't want to mess with because don't mess with Russia. That's the image. So what we're actually finding out about Vladimir Putin is that he's not actually as strong and as confident as he wants you to believe. With all the pictures that he puts out and all the images and, and everything else of him shirtless on horseback. No, that's all an image of trying to bring out from within what he calls manifestation of strength and not just to be strong because he is strong. Someone who actually is strong would say to that question, I'm not trying to manifest, I'm not trying to project anything. I'm just being me. It's actually a bit of an act for Vladimir Putin. He's not nearly as confident as he wants you to believe. <laughs> Apparently Angela Merkel's afraid of dogs and Vladimir Putin knew this and he had his biggest dog <laughs> stop by his meeting with Angela Merkel. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir Putin is a planner. That's his personality. He always has a plan. <laughs> Here's another thing. Vladimir Putin is former KGB. He is former Soviet Union spy. He's a spy. <laughs> you have to be a planner to be a spy. Because if you're not, you won't be around very long. Here's another instance of Vladimir Putin being a planner. Vladimir Putin comes out with a little gift for Angela Merkel, his little nemesis. Comes out with a bouquet of flowers. What it's probably to do is to throw her off and also to create some feelings of reciprocity maybe. You want someone to do something for you, give them a small gift and then they're gonna feel like they owe you back. It could be to make her feel more feminine and him to feel more masculine and strong and dominant over her. It could be a subconscious thing like that. Vladimir Putin's always thinking a few steps ahead. He's a planner. As I mentioned in the beginning, Vladimir Putin plays ice hockey with professionals. However, notice the opposing team's body language in this compilation clip that we put together here. And then we'll break it down.
what a joker. <laughs> Let's just quickly break this down. This guy doesn't try at all to block Vladimir Putin. Opposing teams is just basically watching Vladimir Putin score. The goalie right here shows the reaction level of a sloth. This guy right here holds his hockey stick back and just watches. This other guy makes no attempt at all to actually defend Vladimir Putin. Again, the reaction level of a sloth. Here's the thing, too. If a goalie is good enough to stop a puck, they're also good enough to let a puck slide by. <laughs> He thought he got it, but Vladdy just slaps that in so quickly. Oh, he's just so good. And Vladdy isn't late in life to hockey. He just started playing ice hockey when he was 60 years old. And yes, it's pretty impressive that he's pretty good on skates and is good with decent with hockey. But I mean, come on. These guys are former NHL players. Also, did you notice that Vladdy is the only one on his entire team? That's wearing a white helmet. Can you guess why? Yeah, I think it's to let the opposing team know who to let skate by and who to not defend. You don't want to be checking Vladimir Putin into the glass. That won't end well for them. Oh man, Vladdy's just so quick. That guy was duped by him. This guy right here just blatantly just skates right away from Vladimir Putin. Look at this right here. Vladimir Putin has the buck. It's two on one and then the goalie. Look at what they do. <laughs> yep, no attempt at all to defend Vladdy. Goalie lays on his chest to make it seem like he really tried. That opponent right there just chops his stick a couple times to make it look like he's defending Vladdy. And then the goalie's body language. <laughs> he just really wants to make it look like he's being defeated by Vladimir Putin. <laughs> So what does all this mean? It does indicate quite a bit of insecurity. He probably has some idea that they're not playing their absolute hardest against him. This whole facade of making everyone try to think that Vladdy's this incredible ice hockey player who scores eight points in a single game. Keep in mind, this is ice hockey. A typical score is like three to two. What this all says is insecurity and the facade that Vladdy is just this god type character very common in a dictatorship or totalitarian government you know similar to Kim Jong-un Kim Jong-un he's a god supposedly perfect in every single way trying to overly convince people of something because they're not secure in their place as a leader and want to desperately hold on to power people who are very confident in themselves are not afraid to show weakness <laughs> Vladimir more recently did this joint press conference. Take a look at his body language. We're going to be breaking it down. Мы долго уговаривали это не делать. Это один из основополагающих фундаментальных договоров обеспечения безопасности. And when he talks about the United States withdrawing, he starts shielding his body and giving a scowling look in suspicion. He has suspicion for why they would want to withdraw from the anti-ballistics missile treaty. Представим, что Украина страна НАТО и начинает эти военные операции. Нам что воевать с блоком НАТО? Are we supposed to go to war with the NATO bloc? Vladdy is scared of NATO and is scared for what an expanded NATO means for the future of Russia. So this is Vladdy's response to NATO getting bigger is well if NATO is getting bigger then Russia will get bigger. That's his calculus here. And what's also very interesting here is that Vladdy is rationalizing what he's doing to the media, to the public, wants everyone to know why he's doing this and not just saying, hey, we're doing what we're doing. They're the enemy. You know, I'm not going to have to justify this. I'm just going to just do what I'm going to do. That's what a normal dictator would do. But he's actually rationalizing it and talking about it and explaining himself for why he's doing what he's doing. What that says is that public opinion does matter to him. NATO is all these countries, quite a few. And that's threatening to Vladimir Putin. The more NATO there are, the less Russia there is and the more power NATO has. But Vladdy also surely feels that he's on the defensive constantly, that NATO is expanding and looking to bring in more countries, becoming bigger and stronger, while Vladdy's country gas station isn't really expanding. Clearly, Vladdy feels very threatened. If I were a country, I would want to join NATO. Wouldn't you? Would you want to be like, I want to be part of Russia? <laughs> That's what I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of Russia. No, I want to be a part of NATO. I want to trade with the United States, Western Europe, Asia. That's how you grow an economy, not just Putin.
That's what you get. You get Putin's country gas station. That's not very promising. Now in the comments, what do you think Vladimir Putin's going to do? Do you think he may try to take a chunk of Ukraine? Do you think he's going to try to occupy Ukraine? Do you think he's going to try to take more than Ukraine? Do you think he's going to try to start World War III? Clearly, he's a planner. He has an idea of what he's going to do. Let everyone know in the comments below. And I'll probably be answering that question on my podcast. So if you're not subscribed to my podcast, you may want to do that. We'll answer that question. I know I've been a little MIA lately. I don't plan on being that MIA. Had a little problem with Corona. Also, I am in full-time grad school again. I have two grad degrees. This is my third grad degree. So working on all that. Yeah, we're still in the process of moving everything and getting bigger and better. I'll update you all in a video to come on that. So if you're not already subscribed, remember to subscribe for more body language investigative videos. See you at the top. <laughs>